Hi everyone. I want to show you something that I've been working on lately that has been really fun. So how many of you have this stuff laying around that you're saving because you know, you just know there's something you can do with it, but you don't know what? <laughs> well, that was me. I have had this stuff for years. This is uh, shipping paper. It's a, a funny style of shipping paper. It's usually used when something that be, that's being shipped is very fragile. And uh, I also have some in this dark brown color. It typically comes with a piece of tissue, a layer of tissue paper in with it. But typically, like if you were to be purchasing a vase or some glassware or something like that, it's gonna be most often wrapped in something like this because it gives a lot of cushion to whatever it is. And so I've got several pieces of this and I've kept it because I just knew there was something I could do with it. So the other day, out of the clear blue, a light bulb went off in my head and I realized that there was something fun I could do with this. And so I took a little tiny piece, just a small piece, tore it off of there, cut it, something. Just a little piece, and I thought, I bet that would be a cool base for weaving. And so I took that little piece, and I wove in some ribbon and some cording, some baker's twine, some paper strips, and it's just the cutest thing. And it was so simple because you already have a base ready made for you. I don't know about you guys, but if you've um, done any paper weaving before, you typically have to make a base, a piece of paper as a base so that you have some strips with open holes that you can weave through. Well, this already has that. It's a piece of paper with open holes <laughs> ready to be woven. And I thought, well, that is just too cute. Let me do a bigger one and see if that looks good. So I cut a bigger piece. <laughs> and I put in some more paper strips and some more ribbons and twines. And I included some yarn in this one and a piece of sari ribbon. And just wove to my heart's content. And it was just so fun. Now I have a little um, yarn needle. This is a yarn needle. So that was real helpful for... It didn't, you know, it didn't work with the paper, but um, with ribbons and twines and yarns and things, twine, you know, you, you can weave it through and pull it through and like you're sewing. So that worked out perfectly. And on the first, these first couple, I, um, on the paper, I had used just regular printer paper strips that had been printed on or painted on. And I learned from these two pieces that paper thin paper doesn't weave so well because it's too flexible. So uh, when I got to, I think it was this piece right here, this is on cardstock and I was like, oh yeah, that's nice and sturdy, that will weave perfectly. So from that point on, anything that I was weaving with, as you know, with regard to paper, I made sure that it was um, on something stiffer like cardstock. So, I made those two, and I thought, okay, well, this is um, this is really cool and exciting. And then I thought, I'm not sure if I like all of that being so white on the background. I thought, well, it's paper. Maybe I can paint it. <laughs> so the first thing I did, now I don't have that one laying right here in front of me, and I don't know why. Oh, here it is. Okay. So let me cover up part of it. I'm going to cover up a little bit of it. Okay, so the first one I did was... Uh, I painted it black, okay, but I used um, I used the India ink, the Dr. P.H. Martins, and I just brushed it on, just like you would with a paint, you know, with paint. I used a paintbrush, brushed it on. It was perfectly fine, and it stiffened up the paper nicely, so it worked out great. And I started weaving in. Now, these, these were the thinner papers uh, that I was weaving, but because it was a small piece, it was much easier to weave a flexible piece of paper. But I was picking out these book texts that had um, different colored papers and different types of text. Sorry, I went out of frame. Uh, they had different types of text and different types of um, 
the, the color of the paper was different. So then as I was looking at it, and the whole piece, this is a little rectangle, the whole piece, then suddenly it was, it looked too black, like it was too stark. So what I did was I doodled on it. I took a white Posca pen and started doodling. <laughs> And I think that looks fantastic. And it's nothing but little lines with a white Posca pen. You could use a jelly roll or any kind of white pen you have. And so I didn't do all of it because I wanted you to see how it looked without the doodling and then um, with that added. So I'll go back through and finish the doodling on that. But it, it it's just so much fun and it'll make the cutest little additions to... Um, to journals or card fronts or I mean like this would be really cute on a card front um, so I just kept having fun with this I kept playing so after I painted that black that one black I got some gold paint I don't know if you can tell that this is gold but it is <laughs> and um, it stiffens up this paper real nicely so it's really good um, by the time it's stiffened it's a really good base for weaving because you've got a lot more stability. So I painted a gold one and I painted one in a teal color. And I'm just using, you can scrape it on, you can dab it on with, um, you know, like a sponge dabber, dauber. Um, I think this one was just uh, dabbed on. This is just some two colors of blue, kind of a turquoise and a darker teal. And you can see there's some white spaces left that, that didn't get paint on it, which is fine, you know. But it's nice to have a little variation in it, too, because then it doesn't look so solid when you start to weave through your other little bits. Um, you can also use a foam brush like this uh, to paint it. This is a, a green one that I did, and I just left, intentionally left some areas white uh, on this one. And... Um, just use a couple shades of green so it gives it some variation and it really looks cool when you um, when you do that um, also when you trim off like say you've got a piece that's a little too long or it's a little you know crooked or whatever and you trim it off you've got some pretty little colorful bits that you can use in anything <laughs> you know building clusters and um, just decorating the edge of something these are be, will be perfect for that so I'll be hanging on to those to use for sure so after I had started painting uh, some of this uh, honeycomb paper, I painted one in um, some more shades of green, but different. These are more yellow, yellow green shades, the warmer green. So I painted one in cooler green shades, and then I started weaving it. And it's a nice big piece, okay? And I added all these pretty colors of, um, painted cardstock strips that I I painted myself and then cut them in little quarter inch strips. I put some more of this um, cording in here, ran it through. This is um, yarn, there's more yarn and some ribbon. So I made this nice wide piece and thought that's gonna make a perfect little journal cover, which is exactly what I turned it into. <laughs> uh, I love it. So I've got just this little journal and I've got this awesome cover and it feels great. And I love how the edges you can leave all uneven. I don't know if you can tell that, but it's it's kind of uneven and not, not perfectly straight. I love that. And so the edges of the base is all you can also kind of cut carefully and it can be a little um uneven. Or if you cut like me, it'll always be uneven. <laughs> But um, yeah, it's just so neat. And so I just literally put glue on the cover of this book. It was one of these um, craft colored um, covers. And I just put glue on the back of that and laid it on there, pressed it down. And then I put glue on the spine and wrapped it around and did it just like this. So it was perfect. And um, I just... I just love how that looks. And it's so functional and it makes such a cool little piece. I love that. So after I did that, <laughs> I'm telling you guys, I've been having the most fun with this stuff. Then I did one in these really bright, vibrant colors, almost neon, okay? And this is a variegated um, base with the coral and pink paint, which I've got a picture of. I can show you what it looks like. 
So you can see there that it, there's a lot of white left on the, um, on the base. And uh, then I started adding these cardstock strips. And like I said, they're real, real easy to work with because, you know, if this was a flimsy piece of paper, you wouldn't be able to do this at all. It would just want to bend on you. So um, I just started adding these uh, strips of cardstock that I had painted, and all I did was scrape paint on some cardstock, and then when it was dry, I cut it in quarter inch strips. And then I put this little bit of um, metallic trim through. It's got these tiny little sequins. It's hard to see them, but there's one right here. I know it's real hard to see. You can't see very many of them in um, in this weaving, but. I didn't really intend for the sequence to show. It was the glittery metallic thread that I wanted to show. And it does show. It's glittery and sparkly in there. And then I had some blue yarn that also had a strand of metallic uh, running through it, but I couldn't see it very well. So what I did was, after I got it uh, woven through, I took some stickles <laughs> and I just touched a little dot to each little square that had the... Um, the blue ribbon run, I mean, sorry, the blue yarn running through it. So now it has a sparkle on every little square running through there. I love it. And then I realized, well, my cardstock strips look a little bit plain, so I picked one color. In this case, I picked orange, and I took those out, and I doodled a little different um, doodling on each one of the orange strips. So we've got a zigzag, a stripe, and a dot and put them back in and I just loved it. It made it, it gave it a little variation and the black kind of helped with all that color that was going on. It just made everything look nice and it kind of toned it down just a little bit too. So I got to thinking about this and I thought, well, I do love that black on the strips. So I think if I laid that on a black base, that would just be gorgeous. So I'm not sure yet what I'm gonna do with this, but I know that I want to put uh, one of my little watercolored leaves, uh, leafy branches on here, and um, I'm going to put that there with the word blessed. I think that looks just awesome. I just think that is so fun, and it was so simple. A fun little weaving, and then a little bit of something cut out. You could stamp an image and color it and cut it out, you know? And, um, and then a word, and it just makes a beautiful, elegant looking little piece. I just love that. So I'll figure out what I'm gonna do with this and, and I'll let you know in a future video what I did with it. But that's what that one is. And I had one more started and I thought, I'm not gonna finish it. I'll wait and do that on camera with you guys so that you can see how I'm weaving it and you know how that process works and how simple it is. And so I'm going to stack all of these guys up and set them aside. Okay, um, let's see. All right, so what I did was I, I, I did a piece of yellow, uh, different shades of yellow, and left some white in there. And um, I thought it would be cool to do one in fall colors. And something like this that's a little rectangle would make to me would make an adorable pocket like in a journal so you could attach it on the three sides and then you know tuck your items in there i think that would be a really fun way to use it this is some bronze colored uh, metallic that's like that green one and you can see the little sequin on this one there's one right there so i thought i would finish up this little piece and just show you how easy this is to do so i've got some pieces here that I would like to incorporate. I've got a piece of jute and a brown checked ribbon. And I've got a piece of red, uh, this is the painted cardstock. And then a piece of uh, green, dark green ribbon with some stitching on it. So I'm gonna add those pieces here um, to this piece real quick and show you what I'm doing. Most of the sections here um, will fit this quarter inch chipboard or ribbon right through there. And then there's a little bit of leftover space. Like when you've got, um, when you've got something, I'm trying to slide this up here to the top. So when you've got something woven in there, there's a little bit of room right through here. And that's where 
I'm putting like a single thread of something. So for instance, this piece of jute, I'll put through a little area like that and it will fit perfectly. Now, for something that's going through the smaller segments, this, um, this kind of needle with a big eye will not work because it'll be too tight. And if you use that, it could tear part of the base. So I do have a tapestry needle. So it still has a large eye. It's just not quite as big. So you can see the difference in the size of the eye of the needles. Uh, one, is, um, one is smaller and the other one is much wider. So a smaller one will go through the small areas that I'm talking about. Now, whether I can get this jute through there, that's going to be another, another question, but let's see. I'm going to pinch it and make it flatter. There we go. Worked fine. Okay. So I'm not sure where I'm going to put that just yet. I think I'm going to put these other little pieces in first, and then I'll decide where I think the jute piece will fit the best. So this is just your regular weaving, okay? In this row up here, I started under. So on this one, I'm gonna start on top. Now, these honeycomb blocks are not all lined up um, like a typical weaving. They're a little bit offset from each other. So like, you have one here, okay? But then the next one is gonna be over a bit, see? and then this one will be back again. So they're just a little offset from each other. So anyway, on this one I had started underneath, so in this one I'm gonna start on top, and I'm just gonna weave it over that, it's like a quarter inch block. I'm pushing this on the back with my, thumb, um, with my finger, I'm pushing it up through the next hole that it goes into, and then pushing down with my thumb um, on the top and then just continuing to feed it through on this side. So I'm just kind of pushing that up through, down, up, okay, and down. And it pushes through pretty well. I was so excited when I realized how simple this process was gonna be. Okay, sometimes you have to work with it a little bit to get it where you want it to go, but it's, Totally worth it in the end. I mean, you can see from all this stuff, you can see how it's worth it. Um, and it's fun. You can sit and do this in front of the TV, you know, have you some strips ready to go and your, your little pieces all painted up if you choose to paint them or color them. Um, and just before you know it, you've got a whole little piece done. So there's one row already in. Okay. So that's pretty cool, right? Okay, now, the next one I'm gonna do is a ribbon. And um, I could use the, um, I could use the needle. And if you don't have a needle, you can use a safety pin. Whoops, I threw that on the wrong thing. You can use a safety pin and just attach it to the end of the um, ribbon, but a little, not too close to the end or it'll pull through. But um, you can do that. And, uh, and just run it. My pen is a little bit big for this, but it'll work. And then you just do it just like you would a needle. Oops, I'm out of frame, huh? Got it down close and then forgot. Okay, so this would pull through just like this. Okay. And then just weave right through. And I want to show you, um, it, it is very easy with the needle. Just put the needle on and do this last couple of these last couple of stitches. So you going, you've got sections here about a, about a quarter inch wide. So you go weaving. And the needle makes it very simple, very easy. But it can be done with the, the safety pin if you don't have a needle. Okay. So now we've got the brown strip in. <clears throat> so now we're gonna put in the green one. I saved the darker green one for the bottom because it's dark. I think it kind of helps to anchor it a little bit. 
So I started at the top here, so this time I'll start under. Okay. Almost to the end here. All right, now we'll pull it through. And it's pretty. Um, whoops! I pulled it. Pulled my uh, thread uh, ribbon out of the needle. Um, it's pretty resilient. This paper that I'm using for the base, this honeycomb paper, is pretty resilient. I've been really impressed with how well it's working out, and it's not tearing and ripping. I mean, you can tear and rip anything if you pull it hard enough, but um, this is, has been very, is holding up very well, that's what I'm trying to say. And if I could keep it in the needle, the ribbon was already pretty short there. So I'm just gently working it through. All right, now, if it gets twisted like this, it's easy enough to just twist it. Let's see if I can get that turn there. A little bit more, there we go. Okay, so we got our green in. Okay, so I'm thinking, I'm thinking I might put the, I'm gonna pull down this um, brown piece here, the ribbon, and I'm gonna work this piece of jute right between the brown one and the red one. So that little tiny space that I was talking about, you can see it now. It's a very small area right, right through here. Okay, and it's just wide enough to put yarn and um, like metallic threads and things like that. Plus, you get to use every single slit in this thing. Instead of jumping over a double one like this, the quarter inch, you can jump and weave and sew over the individual pieces. You'll see what I mean here. See how I'm going through every, every piece? And this is why you need this, the smaller needle if you're gonna do this particular part, is because, now you can just do it over the, um, over the quarter size um, pieces, but it's fun to weave it like this because then you get so many, so many little stitches. I love having the, the multiple little stitches there. So I got, I had my little needle and um, it's just a tapestry needle. It's, they're easy to find and um, it just works great. So you can see how that pulled right through there. Okay, then I'll do the rest real quick here. I cannot believe that I have had this paper this many years and not thought of this before because it just makes so much sense. <laughs> it really does. And it works so perfectly and so beautifully. So I'm very excited. I'm very happy to share it with you guys. And hopefully you'll get some joy out of this as much as I am. Okay, let's see. You can make little, mount these and, and hang them on your wall. You know, your little weavings. It'll be beautiful. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and trim that. And trim this go ahead and pull this through a little bit all right trim that ribbon okay so I would cut this down just a little bit more and um, and then what I do to finish it off to make sure that none of these come out I just will take some glue excuse me just take some glue like this is my tacky glue and I just lift up these little uh, bits and put a dot, a tiny dot of glue, and just press that down. And I go through and do the whole thing. 
some of these will be under, and so I'll put a little dot underneath on the on the piece underneath there. Okay, so um, yeah, just a little bit of glue is all it takes, and um, it will hold it. It'll hold it snug. So you just go through and do every piece on that end, and then you go through and do every piece on that end, and those things will not go anywhere after that. So I think that will make an adorable little pocket in a journal. <clears throat> and, uh, or it can be, a, you know, any, anything like what I did here. You know, you can make, it, make something like that. So I just thought a pocket would, would be another cool idea of another use for it. So I think that's totally fun. Okay, now I wanted to show you, I had a couple of other ideas once I started using this stuff, I just kept getting ideas of things that I could do <laughs> with it. So, um, I took some and dunked it in a dish of coffee and coffee stained it. I wanted to mention when you're painting or like in this case, coffee staining, when it's drying, you want to pull on it. If you pull on it, it will keep those holes open more for you and uh, makes it easier to use for these different little projects. So I did that same thing with this. I just, when it was drying, I just was, you know, kind of separating. And so you can see there's areas where it came back together in its flat form, but that's fine. I mean, it's still perfectly usable and everything, no big deal. But I did do some coffee stained, and, um, and then I made a couple of items using that, and I wanted to show you those. Here's a little tag that I made and I just love how it turned out. This was a little sticker that I had in my stash. I mean, something that I've had for a very long time. And I just built a tag, adding pieces on and I filmed it. So I'm gonna have a video coming up very soon. So you guys can see how this was put together. This is um, a stamp that I have and I used coffee to stamp it on a piece of vintage paper or no, I'm sorry, coffee stained paper. So um, I thought that turned out so sweet and I loved it on the tag. And there's a little piece of um, uh, coffee stained dictionary paper on there also. But I just love it. And um, in the video, I had not added the ribbons. So I did that later at the end. And I also uh, later added um, this red string. I had not added that in the video, but I, I decided it really needed some, some contrast there, and so I grabbed some uh, of my sari ribbon and pulled some of the strings, <laughs> and it was perfect. That was exactly what I needed. So um, I love that. And the other thing that I did using some of this, and I'm just using it in these projects as texture, okay, in the background, just texture. So here you can see um, this journal page. This is uh, from my altered book that I'm, you know, creating in. And um, I added a bit here, a bit here, and a bit here. And it's just the neatest texture, neatest feeling texture. I left it all um, loose and it's just so fun. <laughs> it's just too fun. So um, I had started with a page that had used up paint on, so I added more paint and then I added some napkin um, pieces here. You guys have probably seen this napkin before. And I just tore out some, some chunks of it and I just glued them on my page. So I filmed this process and I'm, I'm putting it together with the filming of this and I'm putting those together in one video, which will be coming up very soon for you guys to see how I had created those. And then, um, oh, and I wanted to mention, I'm glad I laid this here. Look at this bit of gorgeousness. This is what you get when you lay your papers down and paint and you're doing your paint through it and you get this yumminess underneath. <laughs> I mean, there's more than one blessing in this, guys. <laughs> there's that one and that one. This was the yellow one and this was the pink and orange one. And I'm talking about the base paper when I painted this, this part of the paper. But how fun is that, okay? <laughs> you get a twofer there. So 
Uh, it's just fun. I mean, this is going to get ripped up and used in lots of projects. I promise. I, I guarantee you it will. And um, Oh, and I wanted to show you, too. I believe, I, I think I did try this out, but I've got a little piece of this here. And I'm going to... Um, I'm gonna uh, put some watercolor on it because it will work just fine with watercolor as well. Okay, and it'll flatten out a little. And as it dries, you can um, you can um, pull it pull it apart so that it dries open and gives you more um, more usability it makes the holes open more. Now the watercolor um, papers are not gonna end up being quite as sturdy as the um, um, acrylic paint is and that I was surprised that the uh, India ink was so nice and uh, sturdy too when it dried but um, it's still a very pretty so if you have watercolor and you don't have you know anything else um, see how you get the color underneath awesome right um, you'll be able to um, do it, color it with watercolor, you know. Scribble it with um, scribble sticks and other water-soluble media and then go over it with water, you know. Same thing, but see how I'm pulling on it? And then as it lays and dries, um, I would come back, you know, and pull it open again and just kind of keep to stretch it open a bit because it's nicer for texture when you do that. It gives it more of a bumpy feel, a bumpy texture. So that's what I did and how I did that. Okay, and the last thing I wanted to um, share with you that I did was I took a piece and I painted it up in this blue color. Not, not that the blue color matters. It was just the color that I picked. Um, and I colored it on both sides, painted it on both sides to make it nice and stiff, okay, with acrylic paint. Then I took out my little, I call it my baby jelly, my little um, three by five jelly plate. I think it's here, here it is. I took it and um, I put paint on this little jelly plate in several colors and I have a little video that I'm gonna insert here. Look how gorgeous that texture is. I fell in love with that, so I'm gonna be doing some more of that. I just love the movement and the texture and just sheer yumminess of that. <laughs> so that's a fun thing. And I, I, painted the, I painted the paper first on both sides to make sure that it was stiff enough to hold its shape well. So that when I put it on the jelly plate, it would work. And it did. It just, it, it's beautiful. And so um, you guys need to try that for sure. Like I said, the last week or two, I have been having so much fun just playing with these little uh, pieces of honeycomb paper, and I enjoyed it so much. When I first started with the weaving process, I was having so much fun that I purchased a roll of this paper, and I made up some kits to put in my Etsy store so that if you guys want to play and have fun, you can. Okay, so this is 36 inches of this paper. And I know it's hard to tell that's what it is, but if you look at it closely, you can see. I know it's in the cellophane wrapper, but 
this is exactly like this, only it hasn't been pulled apart yet, okay? So when this is not um, pulled open, see, it looks like that. So it comes flat, it comes very flat like that, all right? And then when you start using it, it does this. Um, so this is uh, 36 inches, a full yard of this, and um, I'm also including a bunch of um, my cardstock, painted cardstock strips so that you can get started easily, plus um, one of the little needles that I just exactly like the one that I was using that I showed you. So um, these are going to be in my Etsy store. And I want you guys to be able to take advantage of that and just try it out and see if you enjoy it as much as I'm enjoying it. But coffee staining, using it as texture, making little, I mean, I can clearly see some of these bits taken and built up into little clusters um, to put in a journal. I mean, that to me is going to be so much fun, just like the little cluster that um, I built here with the piece here and the sticker and a little piece of lace. Um, that would be just adorable even without the tag, and then you just staple it into your journal. So anyway, I'm going to have these kits in my Etsy store. There's a link in the description of this video. Um, but I do want you guys to have as much fun as I'm having, uh, just creating with this fun thing. And some of you may have it at home, you know, that you got for free because you got it in a package like me and you held on to it thinking, surely there's something that can be done with this. So, um, oh, and I wanted to mention too, you can also use um, like embroidery floss to, to weave with, um, as well as the ribbons. And um, you can take little fabric strips and weave with it. Um, just all kind of anything you can think of, weave with it because it is so fun. And it, every piece will look so different depending on what you use with it. So anyway, guys, thanks for letting me share this with you. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you are anxious to um, grab some of this stuff and play and um, make some cool little little pieces with it. All right, we will see you again soon. Thanks again. Thanks for watching, hanging out with me, and um, look for that video coming up pretty quick on that tag and that altered book page. All right, we'll see you later, guys. Bye-bye. This bigger, whoops, as this bigger, well, I can't hold on to it. Okay.